In a posterior view of the skull, what is called norma occipitalis, most of the occipital bone can be seen. And this is the lambdoid suture. And there is a point here, which is the point of intersection between the lambdoid suture and the sagittal suture. This point is called the lambda. The lambdoid suture is a common site for accessory bones. Actually, these accessory bones are located at the boundaries of the parietal bone, but they are mainly present in the lambdoid suture. Now, in this specimen, I'm going to show you the, uh, one of these sutural bones. This is the um, norma occipitalis. This is the lambdoid suture. And you can see here, this is an, uh, a sutural bone, an accessory bone, sutural bone, also called Wormian bone. In the newborn skull, the sagittal suture and lambdoid suture do not quite meet and there is a, usually there is a triangular posterior fontanel here as opposed to the diamond shaped anterior fontanel there is a triangular posterior fontanel at the site of the lambda this is much smaller than the anterior fontanel and closes earlier before the end of the first year the posterior fontanel the posterior pole of the skull which is the part that hits the ground first when uh, the uh, falling backwards, this posterior pole of the skull is located below the lambda. This is the region of the lambda, and this is the posterior pole of the skull. Below that is the external occipital protuberance. Now, the external occipital protuberance can be felt at the top of the back of the neck. On either side of the external occipital protuberance extends what we call the superior nuchal lines. These extend almost horizontally. Here is the superior nuchal line. We have the superior nuchal lines here and below the superior nuchal lines are the inferior nuchal lines. So these are the inferior nuchal lines. They run concentrically with the superior nuchal lines, but the superior nuchal lines are located at the level of the external occipital protuberance. These superior nuchal lines, they extend toward the mastoid process and they provide for the attachment of the trapezius muscle and the sternocleidomastoid muscles. They are located level with the transverse venous sinus. These superior nuchal lines are the surface landmark for the attachment of the tentorium cerebelli. The tentorium cerebelli is a sheet of um, dura mater that roofs the posterior cranial fossa. Again here, this is the external occipital protuberance and the superior nuchal line. And just above the superior nuchal line, there is a very faint line, which is not very clear in this uh, uh, skull. This is called the highest nuchal line. The highest nuchal line provides attachment of the occipitalis fibers of occipitofrontalis muscle of the skull. The superior nuchal line is the boundary between the scalp above and the back of the neck below. The bone below the superior nuchal line covers the cerebellar hemispheres because this bone below the superior nuchal line it lies in the floor of the inferior cranial fossa which lodges the cerebellar hemispheres. Also you can see that the area beneath the superior nuchal line is rough and it provides attachment for the extensor muscles of the neck in this rough area. The summit or the tip of the external occipital protuberance is also called the enion. And this uh, um, enion here, it marks the site of the confluence of the venous sinuses, the dural venous sinuses in the skull. It is where the um, Superior sagittal sinus 
continues with the transverse sinus, straight sinus continues with the other transverse sinus, and as you can see here, that on the inside of the skull there is an internal occipital protuberance, and the point here, or the region here, is called the confluence of sinuses. Externally, it is marked by the external occipital protuberance. Again, I repeat that the external occipital protuberance is a palpable surface anatomical landmark that you can feel it by moving your finger in the middle of the back of the neck upwards. Here, this is called the mastoid process, and the mastoid process can be felt behind the earlobe. And the suture here between the mastoid process and the occipital bone is called the occipitomastoid suture. Very close to the occipitomastoid suture is the mastoid emissary foramen. The mastoid emissary foramen transmits a vein that communicates between posterior auricular vein and the sigmoid sinus inside the skull. This is the site of the sigmoid sinus again. Here again, you can see the mastoid process. This is the suture between the mastoid and the occipital bone, the uh, occipitomastoid suture, and uh, just close to it is the mastoid emissary foramen.